let's have a little fun with firmware <laughs> so this is mission planner I've got one of the CUAV telemetry radios hooked to it COM4 57600 we'll go into that setup area and look at the radio real quick see this is SIK 2.1 and again these values are pretty standard for Ardu pilot down here if you go into low latency it's the same as choosing low latency from this box I'm going to put it back to Mavlink and choosing the 33 milliseconds window instead of the 131 but you can do all of that just by clicking on these two links low latency at 33 MAV link at 131 <clears throat> I've played with that in the past it didn't seem to be the source of any joy but watch this this is pretty funny this is the radio as it is at this second. Now you can in Q ground control do all of this too. In Q ground control sometimes will update your firmware for you when MAV uh, link and um, mission planner can't if you don't have an FTDI adapter but we'll get into that later. Uh, right now and also as it says here Q ground, ground control can upgrade the firmware on PixHawk devices silk radios and PX4 flow smart cameras whatever wants you to unplug whatever you're wanting to do in and now it wants you to plug in your device it found a SIK radio and now you get to see a list here. You don't get to see the list in Mission Planner. You get to see a little bit of this information. But all of this right here you don't get to see. <laughs> and one of the things that uh, I like the best is it goes to this URL to get looks like the current version of the software according to its desires and that's an Amazon AWS.com site uh, anyway and you can see here programming new version upgrade is complete and of course if I turned on the other side we could connect and start doing our thing in cute ground control but watch what mission planner now says about that radio <laughs> same thing same com port they don't always stay and perhaps I should have rebooted it load settings let's see if it will read the radio without being reboot yep and you see this is where you get that RFD which I thought was for the RFD 8 uh, 900 modems that I was using and it may be and that may be the best firmware for lots of things but that's what uh, Q ground control decided to put on the uh, radio was a 2.0 flavor of this and I honestly believe that if you have this exact setup on the other side of your radio I'm just going to pull the power on that uh, and reboot it and load again here just to make sure uh, if you have that on both sides I think you're going to be fine what I'm trying to do is illustrate to you where a lot of this confusion comes from and see it does stay watch what happens now when I tell mission planner to 
Now you don't get, you get right down here to determining mode and putting it into bootloader mode and programming firmware into device and a progress bar, but we never see where Mission Planner got its firmware version, if it read the board ID, etc, etc, etc. And we get programmed firmware into device. And see, this is where I got in trouble earlier. Because right now, it shows as RFD 2.0, right? Let's reboot it. Again, we'll make sure we are still at COM4. And we'll load settings right here. And look what we've got. Now it's SIK 2.1 version. And everything else is pretty much the same. I've looked at this stuff for years. I, I, I can tell you it's pretty much the same. Montrebod 57600. This format always stays the same. That has something to do with all this configuration. Don't play with that. Airspeed you can play with if you want to. I don't think you're going to come up with a better setting than this is. The net ID is how you can run multiple of these packet radios at the same time by just ch changing the net ID. If you you got a friends going out and flying, uh, one of you can just change your net ID to 26. Copy that to the radio on the platform by copying required to remote. One of them just flying net ID 25, one of them just flying net ID 26. The 26s will con connect with each other, the 25s will connect with the 25s. That's all that's about. In the past, some people have run two radios on a platform, one to transmit to a ground station and the other one on a different net ID to transmit to a antenna tracker. I don't think those kind of backflips are really needed any longer. This is, as we've seen, the transmit power. Play with that. This is the protocol you're expecting to send over the radios. We've seen the ECC, the op resend. Uh, this AES encryption, I've played with that too in the past, along with the request to send, clear to send. You want a duty cycle of 100% and you usually run 10 channels through this frequency range on these radios. It's it's all pretty straightforward. But that was just funny to me that <coughs> uh, Q Ground Control would put a RFD version. I don't know why it says RFD on the ground control in front of this on the telemetry radio and mission planner puts a uh, straight SIK firmware 2.1 I think I'm gonna make sure everything has this on it and see which ones will take it Hollybro C UAV MRO 3DR everything that I have around here but my plan right now is to use this right here. SIK 2.1. All right. I guess that's basically the end of the discussing these telemetry radios and their firmware, etc. Unless you guys have some questions. Uh, until we get out in the field where we can separate these things by 20 feet or more. I'd like to see 50, 1,000. All right. Catch you later.